out in theaters April 20th. A suspense thriller, traffic starring Paula Patton. It's about a young couple and their friends who travel on a romantic getaway, only to be terrorized by a group of sex traffickers. Joining me now in studio is writer, director Dion Taylor and actor Laz Alonzo. Guys, All thank right, you so much for here. joining me. Yeah, thank thanks you. for having us. I have to first ask you, when you came up with this script, coming yeah. up with the idea, I read that it was actually came from emails you received about sex traffickers in your area. Yeah, it was about uh, from the school for my daughter, uh, where they were saying that kids were being trafficked in the area and to pay attention. <laughs> and I was just like, all right. Like, well, what you an got email to get yeah, it. Yeah, it's the first time I've ever seen anything like that. And uh, it just alerted me right away to what was going on in the market. And, you know, here I am thinking this is a foreign problem. and. The reality is it's bigger domestically for all of us. Yeah. And uh, as I started researching and looking at a little bit more information, I was, I was actually blown away that we are not talking about this more. You know, yeah. that the fact that there are thousands of kids being taken daily, uh, not just kidnapped, trafficked. Yeah. yeah. And uh, adult, adult women, adult men. Yes, it was. Uh, I was blown away. Which is crazy because when I think about sex trafficking, one, I think about it's not in my area. That's right. You know? And then two, I think about, I think it would be only the kids. Right. You know? Like, yeah. y you know, so You'd be it's surprised though. I mean, living in LA, you know, where I'm at, people love to go hiking. Mm -hmm. And people go hiking by themselves all the time. And after being in this movie and I doing my research and seeing, you know, the type of abductions that happen, it's like, I don't even want to go hiking by myself. <laughs> Yeah, and I tell my friends, like, don't go by yourself. You don't yeah. know who are, who's hiding in those bushes. <laughs> making funny. everybody scared now. Yeah, I am, man. You know? So turning this into a thriller, what is the most difficult part about creating a thriller and being in a thriller? Um, I think, you know, there was, a, there was a really delicate balance for the film. Mm -hmm. uh, the movie came out exceptionally well. Um, I mean, the reviews are through the roof. People love it. Yeah. They're, they're on the ride, which I think is what... The base of the film is supposed to be. I mean, just look at the trailer and it's That's great. It's, I mean, you're going to have a blast. The yeah. whole movie I, is a yeah. thrill ride. Yeah. But what yeah. I wanted to have happen was I wanted the film to live in a, in a, in a new world, like in the noir world where, you know, kind of where Get Out is at right now yeah. or, or A Quiet Place. Um, I wanted it to be, you know, new art where you can't go into the movie and guess it. Yeah. Right. Because what's been happening over the last 10 years to me is like you walk in. You go, oh, I know this movie. Right. right. From the trailer, I know it. So what's great about this film is you watch the trailer and you go, oh, I know that movie already. And then you go and you say, yeah, OK, everything you think, you know, you don't know. And uh, Laz is uh, I mean, he's exceptional in the film. Paula Patton is exceptional. I don't think you've seen any of the four characters mm -hmm. uh, like this before. Yeah. And uh, we were having a long conversation about Paula Patton and just her world, you know, coming from deja vu and then going into more of the like the romantic comedies. Um, this is a movie where she stretched out. Um, I think I think when you see this, uh, not only will you be blown away, but you would have a new refound respect for the craft. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, Paula, Omar, Laz, Rosalind, uh, dope, diverse cast. Uh, big, you know, big picture is you know trafficking, mm -hmm. but at the same time, if you want to scream, yell hide under your seat, right? Eat the whole bucket of popcorn. This is the movie to watch. <laughs> right? And, and the soda, right? right? Like last night we watched the movie and I ate a whole bucket of popcorn. I was like, okay, I've <laughs> never done that. <laughs> but it was great, it was you know. First time for everything, nervous right? energy though, yeah. Yeah, yes. yeah. Now, Paula said in a previous interview that she is very selective about what she does. She wants to be uh, in projects that she's very passionate about. Right. When you saw the script for this and when you saw what was going on, was that your same reaction? Like, I gotta do yeah, this. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, I had just come off a TV show. And so I was being extremely picky mm -hmm. with what I did next. You know, I felt like what I did next was gonna help define, you know, uh, my, my next stage of projects. And so uh, I wanted to do independent film mm -hmm. because, you know, watching all the films that were coming out and award seasons, it's independent film where all the real stories are being told. Mm -hmm. mm. Uh, and so uh, I had the opportunity to, to work on, you know, Detroit last year with, you know, Catherine Bigelow's Detroit and, and now Dion's uh, Hidden Empire's Traffic. And, and both of them talked about very, very important mm -hmm. topics, very poignant topics that were relevant to what's yeah. going on. Traffic to me, it opened my eyes because I wasn't aware yeah. that 
you know, I always thought it, it's happening in a place that you can kind of like look and it's run down, third world country, it looks sleazy, and I don't go to those places. But to think that things can be happening right in your own neighborhood, at your own gas station, mm -hmm. at, you know, the bus terminal in your city, just little things like that just open my eyes up to a whole yeah. new reality. Yeah. And this genre is something that I've always been a big fan of. Yeah. You know, so I'm really excited that, you know, we, we have those moments that make you like jump in your seat <laughs> yeah. and, and yell at yell at the screen. A lot of those moments. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Laz mentioned it, you know, being an independent film, you know, you took care of the writing, the directing, how to deal with the financing of this. So mm -hmm. how important is this right now to see this movie out and promoting it? And it, it's finally here on April 20th. Yeah, it's uh, I mean, it is it is the the whole cake. Yeah. For me, um, I'm not really, you know, the box office part of it is is something that I'm not worried about um, because I feel like we've already won. I mean, the movie was done this before. It's a micro budget movie. A lot of people don't understand what that means. That means the movie was done for under five million dollars. Um, but to have this caliber of film uh, with this type of weight and energy around it yeah. is fantastic. Um, but yeah, I, I was just telling some other people like I'm the product of no. Yeah. Uh, been told no so many times as a filmmaker and a writer to where I just actually created my own lane and did it myself. And uh, I try to like empower a lot of people and employ them to trust yourself, uh, push yourself and uh, create your own lane and yeah. don't let anyone validate you. Um, if I don't believe those principles, then we're not sitting here today. Um, Laz is not in the movie, Paul's not in the movie. Yeah. And then surround yourself with people that are like-minded. So I was blessed enough to not only create the project, get it financed with my partner Roxanne and Robert Smith, but then be able to go attract great people to be a part of it. And uh, this does not work without them. Yeah. I mean, when I, when I tell you, the, the, and this is me as a filmmaker now, right? <laughs> when I tell you the performances are next level, mm -hmm. last night, it's literally, people are talking and hoping the screen will talk back. <laughs> and right. they're like, but it's that great because it's yeah. grounded in reality. And we haven't seen the, you know, movies like this in a long time. And you know, I, I love referencing The Vanishing. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen it or not, mm -hmm. 20 years ago, but it broke all the rules. And this movie is one of those movies that like, it, it lives in that space where you're gonna go, you're gonna try to figure out the plot and where it's going. Yeah. And one by one, you're gonna go, okay, I didn't see that coming. <laughs> and I definitely didn't see that coming. And I think that's what's making it like a thrill ride. Right, right. which is yeah. hard to do these days because yeah. so much has already been done. So right. to kind yeah. of have yeah. those, those moments is, yeah, I think everything it seems is, impossible, but it's yeah, not. Yeah, it's more corporate though. I think a lot of the films now are corporately constructed right. to where now you go. But even like The Quiet Place, mm -hmm. like John Krasinski, that, that movie was done by him and his wife. Yeah. Wow. Like people don't know that. Right. They, they yeah. did that movie independently. So what's happening is you're, you're in a place now to where the art is now beginning to come up away from corporate, where it's like, no, we want to make this. You yeah, know what right. I mean? That's why you think about Get Out, you think about Moonlight. You know, these are movies that are just being built, man, yeah. for raw people. Like, oh, this would be a great idea for the audience. And uh, yeah, you pull the formula out yeah. and you're just making good art again. Yeah. Yeah. And people connect to that. They understand it. And it's possible because, you know, I would say even 15 years ago, it was a lot harder to create an independent film. But now even with like crowdfunding, you, but you, have, you have fans and with the technology, yeah. you know, you could you could make a great short on your iPhone. You yeah. can make a movie on your iPhone. Yeah. You yeah. know, I, I just think, yeah, there's no there's no limit to what you could do, especially if you got someone, you know, an art, a case artist you're gonna figure out a way to tell a story. Yeah. Right. If you really are trying to tell a story. Yeah. Right. Now, if you're not, you're gonna sit there and make excuses after excuses, but this one is a winner. I mean, this is a godsend for me, uh, just as a filmmaker. I would have never in a million years made a trafficking movie. I'm right. just telling yeah. you, like, yeah. that's just not, I'm a black dude, I'm hanging out, I'm like, oh, yeah, traffic, what? <laughs> like, no, I'm not doing that. And then it came to me. Yeah. And that's the best way for things to happen, is for something to strike you, hit you, and then haunt you, and now we have this film, and I'm just, I mean, we're just over, overwhelmed with the response, but more so the messaging behind it. Right. So it's not, it's, it it's, it's has no color. Right. Mm -hmm. So people are going, well, look at the cast, it's, it's a black movie, it's like, no, but the trafficking is a, I said, man, just go see it because it's it's an everyone per movie, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, everyone has to go see it. Yeah. Uh, Missy Powell is in the film, mm -hmm. which is exceptional. Uh, William Finchner, mm -hmm. Luke Goss, um, yeah, and then we were blessed enough to get uh, Dante Spinotti. I, was, I love yeah. this story. So yeah. tell me how this came about, or tell, tell our That's a great viewers. Story. This is a yeah. great story. So for people that don't know film, 
There is He's a, the man. There, yeah, there's a <laughs> cinematographer. He's 72 years old. His name is Dante Spinotti. He is world-renowned. He has won, well, has been nominated for multiple Academy Awards, but has done L.A. Confidential, Heat, The Insider, Last of the Mohicans. Did I say Heat? Because that's one of my favorite movies, Heat. Um, Strong he, Italian accent when you listen yeah, to Yeah, very, very, I mean, just a genius. Mm -hmm. um, I wrote him a letter. Um, I have no Hollywood connections. Like a fan letter. I wrote a fan letter. I wrote a letter. I was getting ready to make this movie, and I was... Um, my partner, Roxanne, was like, who you want for the cinematography? And I'm like, Dante. We did it playing. <laughs> and, she, and she was like, get out of here. And I'm like, and somebody in the room was like, oh, I used to have an email on him. I worked with him 15 years ago on Last of the Mohicans. No So way. we all, the whole room was like, what? You got an email? So give I was like, me, right, give, it to me. give me the uh, MySpace email you have right. for him. <laughs> so, AOL. <laughs> so they gave me the email and I wrote a letter and Unreal. not know and, and into infinity. Right. Like, you know, I hit sin and it was like this. And I just really was trying to reach out to him to ask him if I could sit down with him because I'm self-taught as a filmmaker to understand light and cameras. Yeah. Two weeks later, I'm driving on the freeway. The phone goes off. I get off the exit, look, and I'm like, I can't believe it. It's like that old email pops up. Wow. And it's him. And next thing I know, I'm at his house with him and his wife no in way. L.A., right? I go in there. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm loud and big, and he's like, look at him. <laughs> and um, I mean, we just hit it off, and we talked about film. And he was getting ready to do a hundred-plus million-dollar movie, and I got ready to leave because we had such a great time. I was just like, I'm going to leave it like this. Right. And, yeah. and I'm going to come back and see this man again soon. And I got ready to walk out the door, and he says, Dion, come here. I turn around, because, you know, you go over yeah, there like. you do what he says. Yes, sir, yes. <laughs> He's like, um, you didn't tell me about your movie. And I said, man, I can't tell you about this movie. He was like, no, you, you sit down and tell me about the movie. I said, man, oh, I, I can't, because the budget of this movie is what you get paid. <laughs> right? Right. Like, so he says, sit down. So I pitched him the film, <clears throat> and he was just like, him and his wife, you know, Ten minutes in, I'm on the on the table, and I'm like, they come down, and then they jump in the car, and um, I left, and he called me, and said, "Hey, man, I'm 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 a pass on this." Incredible. Right. Well, he just finished doing Ant Man, right? Right. So I'm, I'm I won't tell you what movie he passed on, but he was like, "I'm gonna come do your movie," and I love it. And what's great about independent art, and also just the, the power of faith and believing, and and never you know retreating or giving up on your dream is here's a guy. We do it. We do 89 setups, right? And for people that don't understand that, that's a 19 and a half hour day. 74-year-old man and me, right? We finish this day and we sit back. He smokes a big cigar. I'm drinking a Coke. Right. <laughs> and, and we see the, and we watch the sun come up. And to this day, that's like the funnest memory we like that's for him. So awesome. And this is a guy with Michael Mann. Right. You know, yeah. I mean, you name them all. Yeah. And uh, now we're getting ready to do another movie together. So that's God is good, awesome. man. I'm really excited. Yeah. That's my Dante story. So that's why the movie looks. I, and I love that. I mm. love oh, that you fantastic. were like, I'm just going to reach out to him because this is my dream you guy don't to do never this know, movie. Right. You don't never know, man. You don't never know yeah. like what, you know, what happens when you actually put stuff into the, into the universe and really, you know, your intention is correct. Right. Because right? yeah. I never, I never reached out to him like, oh, I'm going to get him. You know what I mean? Right. It's like, no, I'm, my intention was to reach out for this and then something else greater came in. Yeah. That's been my life forever. Wow. I, I often feel like I'm a, a Leonardo DiCaprio in a Titanic at the table. Remember with all the rich people? Yes. Right. He was yes. just like, I'm just happy to be here. Right. Like, I feel like that every day of my life. I'm like, all right, I don't know if it'll be here tomorrow, but I'm going to eat this turkey right now. Right. But it's great. It. Yes, I it's fantastic. It. Who are your mentors? Because I feel like you are giving such good advice to through this interview to people who are want to mm. do this. So who are the people you look up to? You know, I, I, I'm a... Um, I have a, like an eclectic agenda of people that I like. Uh, one of the biggest people in my life is a guy named Robert Smith, um, who is the richest uh, African-American man probably in the world now. Mm. Um, I've been fortunate enough to, to know him and meet him and become very close with him. Um, he's someone that has defined a lot of how I feel and what I think about and how I think about things. Hmm. Um, I also look up to a lot of people that are, you know, believe it or not, not African-American. I just kind of look at people that are uh, not defined by boxes. Mm -hmm. um, really, you know, a big fan of people like Bill Gates and, you know, I just watch. I love art. 
Yeah. So uh, things like that are often like what I attract to like, man, because I love that people don't, you don't have to play by the rules, right? Right. But everybody feels like you do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's the people that break the rules. It's the people that are thinking differently that actually find yeah. their way in this space. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And just like Laz, you know, it's funny because you get on set and for him, and he'll tell you a great story. But like for me, it's more like coaching yeah. because what I have to do is I don't have that gift. So when I give him, you know, the job to be an actor in the movie and to be my partner in that film, uh, it's not a boss. And it's like we're equals. Like, right. this is my partner. I need you to do what you do so we could be successful. And to see these guys, what I love is to see artists lose themselves. Yeah. See, that's a very hard thing. A lot of times, you know, you've seen Jamie Foxx lose himself in yes. Ray. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. You've seen Charlize Theron lose herself yes. in Monster. See, that's the next level. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And and that's what, as a filmmaker, you strive for is to find artists like Laz and Paula Patton, where that people are like, oh yeah, I love what she does when she. But this one, no, she's gonna, she loses herself. Right. Yeah. And I think that's the next level where you know, for me, I I I, I am basically a fan of what they do, and that inspires me as well. Because I'm like, man, look at that. And I try to lose myself as a director. <laughs> Sometimes I'm a little loud, I'm a little crazy, you know what I mean? But yeah. what happens is we throw all the paint and then we go back and look at it. Everybody goes, man, that's pretty good. And yeah. we say, yeah, it's a great piece of work. And you got, I mean, obviously you can tell when someone is losing themselves on set yeah. in a good way and in the moment, in their script and, and doing it, yeah. you feel it. So, so when you're in that moment, I mean, is it just like you just do your job so they can really accelerate at theirs? You know, it, it really becomes um, a, a, an experience that you can't describe. Yeah. You know, it's almost like you black out in a way. Yeah. Um, because it becomes effortless. You know, so you 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 kind of think about, you know, how can I create this character and make it believable and make the moments as real and as authentic as possible. Um, and uh, you know, and you know, with Dion, it was it was exceptionally uh, liberating of an experience because, you know, um, I had just come off of doing a TV show and, you know, for actors, when, when you work on TV, uh, you know, the script is king. Mm -hmm. You know, the words come from your executive producer and they've been approved by everybody all the way up, mm. you know, to, to the, ne to the executive and nothing's changing. <laughs> yeah. Improving is, does not exist in their dictionary. And unless you get permission, like you have right. to pitch a line change and get it approved and they got to make phone calls and if it's in LA and you're shooting in New York right you can't change it for it's three hours until they wake up yeah and so uh, I remember my first pitch to Dion you know where I you know I figured out okay this is how I can get him to say yes to this change. so you, you figure out how to pitch your improv and, and and you know the first thing out of Dion's mouth was man F the script <laughs> I said, what? Okay, I'll work with you more. That's the script, man. And he had a copy of the script and he threw it on the ground, you know, That's and then he awesome. went into like his basketball coaching mode. He's like, look, man, awesome. you know, this character, he's supposed to get under everybody's skin, man. He's a sports <laughs> agent, man. He's got a lot of money. He's successful, man. This guy. And so he sits up there and you sit up there and you like buying into this you thing. Yeah, you get pumped up. You know, and then by the end of the, of the, of the motivation speech, like I told Dion, I was like, man, like, it could have gone one or two ways. Like if you'd have told me, now go punch him in the face, I probably would have gone, come in, bam, you know, like that, like that, that was the energy on set. That's it was like very amazing. empowering. And so um, he, he basically took the reins off and took the, the, the leash off, so to speak, you know, and, and said, go get him, you know, and, and, and when you have that freedom as an actor to just let the character breathe and live like, okay, this is what it is now where it goes. Yeah. It, it, the characters is going to take it from here. Yeah. Then then that's where the real magic happens, because now you're not creating anymore. Right. You know, it, it, it's it's you're just allowing real authenticity to happen. That's right. right. You know, and, and that's what I think you were talking about, you know, when when people become unrecognizable, you know, and, and that's why, like a lot of people that have watched the film and have screened the film immediately, you know, that one of the things they say is that they've never seen me play this character before. They've never seen me on screen play this character. You That's know, awesome. Yeah. That, that is such a compliment. Yeah. 
That's such yes, a, and you know, I've, I'm a former athlete as well, and um, I played volleyball at UNC Chapel Hill. Okay. And you know, one of the things as an athlete is that you can be coached. You know, uh, you can be trained, but as soon as the game starts, yeah. it's you and your teammates. That's and right. I feel like that's really how you approach this film. We've trained, we've gone over everything, but now that it's game time, yeah. it's up to you to make sure that you are the best character you can be. Right. That's right. And I love that. <clears throat> that's right. Yeah. No one, no one trains you for you know. The, the moment that moment yeah. like that's something that happens naturally it's it's a gut instinct like you know when the ball comes off the mm -hmm. rim oh i gotta run over there to grab it like right. there's no training for that right. right you know what i mean or when they hit you it learn off to the see net. it coming oh yeah he's yeah. getting ready to hit i'm gonna jump to block like yeah. it's just what what it is and i think it's an excellent um way to approach film uh it is you know film is there's cameras rolling just like right now and what i'm looking for is you know everyone's like well what, what are you looking for it's one moment yeah it's one look. Yeah. And and as you're weeding through the cereal of all the stuff, I know automatically like, okay, that I got that editing. Uh -huh. <laughs> I got that editing. And then you let them go. So that's why sometimes improv is amazing, especially if you get actors that are really into it. Yeah. Because they'll give you things that they never thought they would give you because they're not reading. They're not thinking. That's they're just going. And you get those little moments. And I think traffic represents like a complete colossal uh, energy storm of that. Like when you get a moment to see it, you're gonna go, hey, you're gonna be on the ride. You're gonna say, oh my God, this is beautiful. These big vistas, these big, you know, the greens, it's beautiful. I mean, if you've yeah. seen the trailer, it's gorgeous. Yeah. And then you get to this beautiful house, it's an infinity pool, and you're like zoned out. You go with Paula, like you love her. You're like, oh my God, I love this woman. And you love Omar Epps, and they're yeah. like, they're in this thing, and they're like, oh, I gotta be. And all of a sudden, Something happens, the doorbell rings and life changes. And from that point on, like you're like, you are like on it, man. And and it's great because young, you know, old, it doesn't matter. It's like, boy, that movie like last night just lady was like, boy, that movie almost gave me a heart attack. And I'm like, well, <laughs> I'm Thank like you, you for not having one. Like, I don't want to die. And I'm like, okay, don't do that. Like, <laughs> But it's great. No, it's great. That's awesome. You guys, thank you so thank much you. for thank talking to me about your movie. Yeah. Traffic out April 20th. Make sure you go and see it. Please see it.